Welcome back to Ancient Stones. Let's continue our adventure at Montezuma's castle and Montezuma's well. The castle is also a real religious site for Apaches. The name for for the castle in Apache is Gahan Bikwa. And Gahan are the sacred spirits that that come in times of uh, trouble, in times of help, that our stories go. And uh, they come and bless the people, heal the people, and they're the watchers of our people. We like to tell visitors it is not a castle and Montezuma was never here. Uh, probably settlers, uh, European settlers coming into the Verde Valley in the 1800s, looking at the abandoned ruin, fascinated by how beautiful, impressive it was, assumed that it was built by the Aztecs. And of course Montezuma was an emperor of the Aztecs and that was the connection. But we know that Montezuma was never in the southwest. President Theodore Roosevelt in 1906 uh, declared uh, uh, that these ruins in the Southwest should be protected and under the Antiquities Act of 1906 uh, by presidential proclamation Montezuma Castle became a protected uh, site in the National Park Service. The Hohokam, uh, a group of people from the Phoenix area, were uh, in this area around 6-700 A.D. And then the Sanawa culture from the Flagstaff area came down into this area uh, in about the same time period. And uh, they were all here till the early 1400s and then they moved on. Sanawa means uh, without water. And they're a prehistoric culture, which means there's no written records. And so all the information we have about the Sanawa culture is by what they left behind, artifacts. There's uh, a lot of theories that the uh, Sanawa perhaps were uh, ancestors of the uh, Hopi. There's a, uh, uh, one of the Hopi clans talk of a people joining them from the south. Hochikvaipi is the name of the uh, is the name of that place, uh, Montezuma Castle, and it's named after a river. That little river that runs through is called Hochikavaya. And I guess today, I, in Arizona map, it's called the Beaver Creek. And long time ago, and still today, uh, Hopis use that as a, as a mainstream for their farming, agriculture. And they take some of that back home. Beaver Creek is one of the tributaries of the Verde River. And it's a prime example of a riparian habitat. Uh, riparian meaning uh, permanent water. Montezuma's castle overlooks Beaver Creek. The structure is similar today as it was then. The cliff dwelling is 90% original. Uh, there's been a little bit of work, uh, some steel beams put inside the, the dwelling, uh, some uh, new mud plaster uh, on the outer walls. We think it was built in the 1100s, and it probably took about 100 years. If you take this structure out, it's a, it goes back about 34 feet. So it's this large natural opening, and they, they uh, build it with chunks of limestone rock, uh, beams from the Arizona sycamore tree, the, the beautiful tree with the white bark you see. How did they get up into the cliff dwelling? Well, they probably made ladders um, from the fiber of the yucca plant uh, and made uh, rungs of rope to get up into the cliff dwelling. Uh, it's uh, about the size of a large three-bedroom house of today. It's about 1,800 plus square feet. The rooms are about 10 by 10, and I can stand inside the cliff dwelling in the rooms. Uh, there's uh, stains on the wall, smoke stains, so we know they had fire inside for pr probably heat and cooking. There were many artifacts that revealed what little we know of their culture. Stone axes, uh, digging sticks that they used for their farming, pottery, and uh, quite a variety of pottery was found also. What was discovered taught us about their lifestyle. Well, we know they were uh, farmers because they left 
behind matates that are trough shaped, which is an indication of formal agriculture, and they even found corn cobs. Uh, they also hunted and gathered. And then also they were known for uh, excellent weaving. They probably uh, had that as a trade item also. Just a little to the south of Montezuma's castle is the remnants of a village now called Castle A. And unfortunately, there was a, uh, apparently a large fire that created, uh, uh, well, destroyed Castle A. And all we have now is just the back walls. But you can see where the, the, uh, the beams went into the, uh, the back walls that formed the ceilings. And it was a, a larger uh, site than actually Montezuma Castle. We are still left with the question, where did they go? You know, they were here at their peak for over 300 years. And the uh, population of the Verde Valley could have been as many as five to 10,000 people. And with all the uh, farming that went on, the uh, collecting uh, wood from the trees, the denuding of the vegetation, there might have been uh, problems with uh, erosion, flooding. Uh, certainly, uh, the game probably moved off <laughs> from the area. Um, Disease could have been a problem. They didn't have sanitary systems that we have today. So there's probably a combination of factors that they just finally, ecologically, the area wasn't able to sustain them any longer. At least that's a theory. We don't know for sure why they left. It seems to me that our people are always thought of as relics. And uh, we kind of disappeared with, with history but we're still alive and we're still here. And thank you for the opportunity to share these things with Sedona Network and the public that, that the Yavapais and Apaches still live here, still do the things that their ancestors did. And they still strive for the same thing that all human beings do, and that is to live in peace and harmony with the entire environment, whether it be people or the land. Thanks for watching Ancient Stones. We'll see you on the next adventure. The music you heard in this show was courtesy of Canyon Records. Their CD collection can be purchased at Canyon Records Productions.